since I've been working in Germany, I've found that there are, I've heard that there are thousands of children that are being brought from Romania and from the Ukraine and uh, from other parts of Eastern Europe trafficked across the Czech border into Germany and then sold. We don't know where they're sold. We don't know who buys them, but they're there somewhere in that country. And, um, you know, I could tell you stories all night, but um, I just want to talk a little bit about prostitution because in Germany, prostitution is legal. And so the attitude is, well, it's a woman's choice. And, uh, you know, this is her career choice. And I've had my uh, thinking changed a little bit. And since uh, some friends and I began a project called Alabaster Jar, um, named after the woman in the scriptures who broke the jar of perfume on Jesus' feet. And um, as we go on the streets, we, we're talking to women who do seem to be there by choice. We call them on this particular street the Barbie dolls because they all look the same, just like Barbie. You know, have the long, straight blonde hair and the big high boots and the, and the clothes and so on. But you know, it's, it's, as we've got to know them, and some of them have begun to share a little of their lives with us, you know, they're in it for the money. And the money's good, you know, $80, $80 for the you know, smallest service that they offer. Um, Full sex, about 200 You know, that's good money if you get several clients in a night. And yet, what is it doing to the inside? There's been a lot of research done on prostitution, and it shows that uh, people are torn apart. They're damaged. They're emotionally damaged. Often they're mentally damaged. And, of course, there's physical damage and some continuous sex, abuse, rape, and so on. And also very deep psychological damage. And one of our friends, Bibby, said one night when we asked her about this job, she said, professionally it's okay, but she said, my soul is in the pits. And, and that's, you know, as Christians, that's really what we're out to try to help these women, to find their dignity, refine their dignity, and to heal their soul, and to show them that they're people of worth and value. One of the other streets we work on, most of the women are trafficked. Uh, well, I shouldn't say most, probably about a third. From Hungary, from Bulgaria, from Czech Republic, Slovakia, some from the Ukraine. Brought by people across the border because they're desperate for work. They're promised jobs as waitresses. But of course the waitressing is standing on the street soliciting customers. And so, as I lived in Thailand, people are not all, only trafficked out of Thailand all over the world because Thailand is known as the centre for sex trafficking because people are also trafficked in. I remember one day walking down the street and, and saw this girl, she was obviously Russian, beautifully dressed, and, but I just noticed she was holding hands with this guy. He wasn't Thai, I don't know what nationality he was, but I just noticed the way that he held her hand, it was like a, a vice grip, you know, you're not getting away, you belong to me. And just as I walked past, I sort of tried to make eye contact with her, but she saw nothing. But just the expression of her face, I knew that she certainly wasn't there by choice. And she was being there as a slave. And here, every time I've been to the United States, which since 1999, I was saying at dinner time, I think I've been here six times. Every city that I've been to, somebody's had a story. Oh yes, you know, there was a raid down the road on this house. And Ten Thai women were taken out of a basement, and oh yes, there were Indian girls trapped in this house down the road, down the hill in Berkeley, I think it was. And actually, we'd pass that house every day when I was staying there. And so it's here. It could be, could be someone in your street. It could be somebody in this town. There's people there that shouldn't be there. You know, I'm I'm just going to close with a, a wonderful story. I was in Atlanta. Um, last year, beginning of last year, and I was actually on a youth with a mission base, and um, I was there, I'd spoken on their, in their program, it was their intercession day, and after I'd spoken, we gathered in little groups of four or five to pray, and there was a Filipino guy in my group, and uh, as we began to pray, he began to see pictures, you know, in his spirit, I guess, and he said, I see a ship, he said, I see it coming across the ocean, and he said, there are Chinese women and some children, and they're down, they're locked down in the hold. And then he, we pray, 
pray through that and pray about some other things. And then he said, I see them. They're, they're disembarking in, I think it was uh, Ecuador. And they're being transshipped, he said, with produce, with potatoes. I've heard of bananas from Ecuador. I didn't know potatoes came from Ecuador. And uh, anyway, he said, then they're coming up. They're coming up um, to the Mississippi River. And I thought, you know, how earth can you come by boat from Ecuador to Mississippi? And then somebody said, oh, you know, the canal. Is it Panama? So is my job. He's bad. It's still open for cargo, Panama. Because I knew it had been closed years ago for passenger ships. But it's still open for cargo. And then he could see, he said, they're being put into trucks and they're being buried under the potatoes. And he said, they're heading for New York. And, you know, he could not possibly have made that up. And because of who he was, he couldn't possibly have known that in his natural mind. But I knew, because of my experience, I knew that everything he said could be true. So I actually contacted somebody that I knew in the State Department. And I said, over the email, I said, I cannot tell you how I know this, but I know this. And maybe there's some way you can do something about it. And then I, I went back to Germany and I kind of forgot about it, I guess. And then some time later, I read in, in some material that I get over the internet, it said how trucks had been apprehended coming into New York City with vegetables from Ecuador and women destined for the sex market. So God knows, that's the point of my story, God knows what's going on. And you know, it's as you and we seek God and listen to God and pray that this whole thing internationally can be broken, I believe. And so I would encourage you to pray into these issues. Ask God to show you what's happening and you might be amazed what you see and what you find out. And then use that information to pray because this, I believe, this whole thing of um, trafficking for sexual purposes and prostitution, it's, it's, it's demonically based and it's evil and the, and the orchestrators and the operators are evil, they're depraved and they're given over to evil just for lust of money and power and so on. But our God is greater and he has the power to break this whole thing. You know, when we think, well, think, well, she's crazy saying that. You know, we're talking about millions of people. But God can do it if we, as his people, commit ourselves to pray. So thank you, and I'll finish on that.